Um, first, starting with uh, the Ambassador of the Republic of China in Bulgaria, Mr. Uh, Chang Haiju. Uh, welcome. Uh, Mr. Uh, Tom Jenkins on my right, uh, CEO of the European Tourism Association. Uh, Mr. Uh, Martin Zahariev, uh, Managing Director of the National Tourism Board Association in Bulgaria. Next to him, uh, Ms. Claudia Vernotti, Director of, in, of China EU, uh, a forum uh, promoting uh, cooperation and investment in, uh, between the EU and China, also linked with uh, digital innovation. Mr. Fodor, yes, <laughs> sorry, I don't see you very well. Mr. Fodor, Deputy Director General in the Department for Tourism International Relations of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Trade in Hungary. And uh, Mr. Uh, Gelev, uh, uh, who is Vasily Gelev, uh, who is Director of the Center for Promotion of Cooperation in Agriculture between China and the countries in Central and Eastern Europe. Well, thank you very much for, for being all here. Uh, I will also introduce myself uh, and perhaps explain why I was asked by the Bulgarian presidency to moderate this panel, uh, focusing on the 2018 EU-China tourism year. Uh, I'm Anna Thanasopoulou. I'm uh, the head of tourism at the European Commission, uh, who is uh, the body on the side of the EU implementing the EU-China uh, tourism year, together with our partners in China, CNTA. Uh, so, uh, uh, allow me just two, three minutes to explain uh, what uh, the EU-China uh, Tourism Year um, is about uh, in our eyes, um, explaining quickly the objectives and then inviting uh, the panelists to react to these objectives, to uh, express their views and see how, um, uh, from their perspective, they can see the opportunities that the year can offer uh, for the tourism sector, both in China and the EU. So if I may say, uh, I would summarize the objectives of the EU-China year in three, three words. Uh, the year is first about people, it's about people, places. It is about destinations, both in the EU and in China and how we can uh, promote them and make them uh, better known. That includes, as we have heard many times this, since this morning, not only well-known and established destinations in the EU and in China, but also lesser-known destinations and more remote places. And last, the year is about investment. It's about businesses. It's about how to boost investment and business cooperation between the EU and China. There is a number of actions that we're running at European level in that uh, direction, but uh, uh, before explaining uh, what we may be doing uh, at European level, I, um, I'm ready to invite the first panelist already to take the floor, uh, Ambassador Chang Haiju. Uh, if you can give us your own views about um, the EU-China cooperation and how uh, the Silk Road um, already connecting uh, trade between the two continents, Europe and, and China, uh, how these days uh, the Silk Road is developing also in the context of cooperation in tourism between EU and China, and what your views are about that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank 大家下午好，很高兴来今天参加这个论坛。那么大家知道，二零一六年的七月第十八次中国欧盟的领导人会晤上，双方共同宣布了，呃，这个二零一八年为中国欧盟的旅游年。那么今年的一月十九日，欢
。那么，据我所知，今年的三月二号，也就是中国农历传统的元宵灯节，中欧各国一大批标志性的建筑将举行以中国元素为主题的亮灯仪式，以烘托旅游年的气氛。这个保加利亚的旅游部长安格科万女士告诉我。届时呢，保加利亚的一系列世界文化遗产的建筑物将被点亮。旅游年的这个举办呢，呃，充分的体现了中俄双方加强这个人文交流、扩大旅游以及相关领域合作的共同愿望。欧洲现在仍然是全球最大的旅游市场，拥有着超过一半的世界文化及自然遗产。每年吸引着全球百分之五十以上的游客。欧洲作为旅游目的地，对中国游客的吸引力是毋容置疑的。二零一六年，中国国家旅游局公布的中国人向往的世界目的地评选 TOP 一百中，有三十个地点在于欧洲。中国的城市竞争力研究会发布的二零一六年全球最佳旅游城市排行榜中，前五名中欧洲城市占了四个。而中国呢，则是当前世界第一大的出出国出境旅游消费国和发展最快的旅游目的地国，旅游市场。那么近年来呢，中国政府高度重视旅游产业和旅游合作的发展，旅游业已成为中国国民经济发展的战略支柱和经济转型升级的重要的动力。二零一七年，中国出境游这个。呃，人数已经达到了一点二七亿人，境外消费贡献了全球旅游收入的四分之一。中国的国土面积呢，与欧洲大陆相当。作为拥有五千年历史的文明古国，中国有许多独一无二的世界文化遗产项目，比如长城、故宫、兵马俑等等，同样吸引着来自世界各地的游客。我们期待着中欧通过共办旅游年活动。不仅大幅增加相互出游的旅客数量，让更多的民众亲身体验、感受对方悠久灿烂的历史文化，增进友好感情和相互理解，同时借助旅游推广平台，有效带动交通、住宿、购物、金融、保险等相关产业的发展，推动相互投资增加，促进就业，取得互利双赢、谋投谋求共同的繁荣。呃，如果说到挑战呢，我认为我们共同面临的最大挑战就是如何在短期内将双方拥有的最巨大的市场和消费潜力转化为实实在在的旅游收入。必须看到的是，中国赴欧洲的游客近年来虽然保持不错的这个增长率，但是整体仍然偏低，仅占中国出游出境游的数量的百分之四多一点。同时呢。欧盟内部各地也是严重不平衡的。作为中国驻保加利亚的大使，我首先自然关心的是促进中保之间的旅游合作。二零一七年呢，中国到保加利亚来的旅游旅游人数比去年增长了百分之五十，但是即使是这样，也只只仅有一万九千人次，只占呢中国赴欧洲旅游的人数的千分之三。嗯，我来到保加利亚以后呢，我非常注意啊，观察了解保加利亚的这个各地的旅游条件。有时间呢，就到保加利亚的各地去走访。我发现呢，保加利亚不仅有许多独特的这个旅游资源，比如著名的黑海圣地巴尔纳、罗多比山脉独特的自然环境、优美的滑雪场、丰富的温泉、矿泉资源，还有散布各地的历史文化古迹、闻名遐迩的玫瑰产品。和葡萄酒，这些呢都对于崇尚自然、讲求养生、喜爱文化和痴迷购物的中国游客产生强烈的吸引力。但是，非常遗憾的是，由于资讯的不畅通，那么保加利亚在中国的知名度啊，现在甚至赶不上远在远在南半球的一个小岛毛利求斯。那么，在中国发达的旅游资讯网上呢，也很少有保加利亚的旅游产品。今天呢，我十分高兴地看到，在这个中欧旅游年的期间，欧盟旅游委员会
以及相关的组织，将通过一系列的活动加强在中国的宣传推广，在更多的景区普及中文信息指南，同时提升签证和出境便利化水平，开展有针对性的调查研究。进一步掌握中国游客的出行喜好和消费习惯，充分挖掘欧盟旅游市场的潜力，努力为中国游客提供更贴心的旅游体验。保加利亚政府同样高度重视吸引中国游客的工作。去年九月，在上海设立的保加利亚共和国旅游信息中心，这是第一个专业的保加利亚的旅游信息服务机构。保加利亚旅游部还计划在北京举行大型的旅游推介会，并邀请中国的这个旅游大 V 到保加利亚来体验造势。那么在这里，我想补充建议的是啊，对于像保加利亚这样很多等许多呀有待开发、需要升级旅游资源的这个国家，特别是一些中东欧的国家。那么我我建议这个欧盟有必要从整体上予以扶持，那么使这些潜在的旅游热点获得必要的发展动力。比如说，如果要是能够统一的使用这个 N 深根的签证，比如能够是统一的欧元区的话，特别是这个能够同中国的银联更加深度的开展合作，那么包括中国游客在内的这些远途的旅行者。将节省大量的资金和时间成本。具体到保加利亚呢，针对旅游景点分散、单个景区内用少的这种特点，需要开发更多的跨界的旅游产品及深度的主题旅游活动，比如说主打健康理念的养生旅游、矿泉加酸奶的长寿秘诀、主打浪漫情调的玫瑰芳踪加红酒品鉴。主打冬季运动的冰雪加温泉等等。那么最后，当然我还想提一下关于开通直航的问题，这也是保加利亚方面非常关注的一个重点。这个旅游的便利啊，确实是影响人员往来的一个关键的议题。以捷克共和国为例，这个布拉格在中国历来都是享有盛誉的传统的旅游胜地，但是呢，在开通直航之前。每年到保捷克旅游的这个中国游客只有四万人次，那么开通直航以后的短短三年内，这一数字增加到了每年五十万人次，所以我们也一直在积极推动中国的航空公司，积极考虑开通中国城市到保加利亚的直接航线，但是需要重视的是呢，航空公司作为经营实体，必然要考虑其经济收益。是否能有足够的潜在客流？如何破解这一个难题？我想刚才主持人女士提到的关于“一带丝绸之路”的这个这个想法，是一个非常好的倡议。那么呢，我们呢必须要从综合的合作施策入手，加强双方中国和欧盟以及这个其他的欧洲国家在更广泛的领域里开展。这个合作，以使这个交通的这个航空公司在交通、物流、运营等广泛的领域里边，能够平衡其经营活动的效益，为其下决心开通这个维持和维持这种客运的直航，创造有利的条件。那么，我想借这个机会感谢东道主保加利亚旅游发展部及其会议会议组织方的邀请。也祝这个欧洲的旅游市场继续繁荣兴旺，同时呢，祝祝愿中欧的旅游年活动能够结出丰硕的成果。谢谢大家。Thank you, Ambassador, for this interesting and rich intervention. You gave us a lot to think about. Let me now turn to Mr. Fodor. Uh, Mr. Fodor, you represent uh, um, a ministry of a member state of the European Union, Hungary. Uh, may I ask you about, for your views about how we can attract more Chinese tourists uh, to Europe? And uh, um, what is the role of regional and cross-border cooperation in this respect, developing joint tourism products that uh, uh, can help us promote better 
uh, European regions and also Europe as a destination in long haul markets like China. Please. Thank you very much, uh, Anna, Madam Chair, and uh, thank you very much, Your Excellency, for this uh, wonderful and very comprehensive presentation. To be honest, uh, I think uh, I'm not in an easy position to make uh, sustainable, com uh, substantive comments after such uh, uh, impressive uh, speech, but uh, and also it's getting end, uh, towards the end of the conference and uh, everybody is already thinking about dinner time. But let me share with you some good practices and some of our, some of our uh, ideas that we think it would be very important and uh, useful to think or to, to, to um, create when we are talking about regional and uh, cross-border cooperation in order to attract more uh, Chinese visitors to Europe. Uh, first of all, let me uh, tell you that uh, we have uh, now almost four years of cooperation between the 16 Central and Eastern European countries in the framework of tourism, of course, and between China. We were honored to, to be nominated as the Tourism Coordination Center of the uh, 16 plus 1 cooperation, which was established in Budapest in uh, May 2014, so almost four years ago. I think uh, for this audience, we don't have to, to detail too much why it's important to cooperate uh, in, this, uh, in this part of the world, because from such a distance as China, like individual countries, uh, I can mention not only Hungary, but any other countries in the region, it is simply unsizable. Uh, un, uh, but with uh, taking into consideration the region, starting from the Baltic states all the way to Visegrad countries down to the Balkans. This gives a population of about 120 million people, which is already, I think, uh, relatively tangible for Chinese tourists who are uh, used to the uh, size of the cities as our countries sometimes. So we, we believe that one of the most important tasks of this uh, cooperation is to present uh, the CE region on the Chinese market as an attractive tourist destination, also attractive European tourism destination, and we are aiming to coordinate the activities of, uh, of the 16 countries. There are various uh, different uh, kind of uh, events that we organize, not only uh, participation in travel affairs, because I think in the um, in the today's era there are more uh, more useful and sometimes important uh, things to do. Also, we organized two or three uh, China Information Day conferences in Budapest, which were basically aiming to to raise more awareness that uh, Chinese visitors need some special attention in certain respects. So they are not only um, good spenders and good uh, tourists, but on the other hand, they are demanding as well in order to, to cater for their needs. Some special education and training is needed for our service providers. So we believe that this is also one of the essential uh, tasks of this uh, cooperation. Also, we established a website which can be useful for B2B and also for for uh, other participants from the uh, national tourism organizations and from tourism ministries. And in 2016, we also started a little bit of product development, which is not, of course, the role of the uh, governments and the ministries, but we wanted to help and uh, to give some impetus to the private sector who, who is uh, basically uh, interested in this creation of joint packages and uh, and products because as we all know Chinese tourists are coming uh, to many countries and then uh, spending mostly one or two maximum three nights in uh, various destinations so our aim is to 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 increase their average stay as uh, in terms of the EU China tourism year uh, I think we it's a, I think it's a very good initiative that uh, uh, European Commission uh, organizing and actually we are very happy that uh, the initiative came from the European Parliament. One of our fellow colleagues uh, is also present in this room today and of course that the itself the EU China Tourism Year is not enough but to start somewhere and to create such events even at ITB China or WTM London it is very important to to get the private sector on board in order to 
to, to make them more visible on the Chinese market, especially very grateful for the initiative of this Light Bridge project that will, uh, that will take place on the 3rd of March all over uh, Europe and I think in China as well. We are also participating from uh, Hungary as well. We will have uh, some events on the 2nd and 3rd of March in Budapest. We, are, uh, we will uh, light up in red the Hungarian Palace of Arts in Budapest and also in the next day on Saturday we will have a nice celebration event with some special light shows in uh, Hotel Gellert, in one of the most iconic uh, places in Budapest. And uh, we really do believe that by these initiatives we can uh, also <coughs> raise the awareness of, uh, of the European service providers that how they can uh, successfully enter into the Chinese market in order to, re to, to get some more uh, Chinese tourists. I think for the first uh, uh, comment, this is, this is I, uh, my uh, intervention. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, let me now turn to Mr. Zahariev um, with the same question. In your view, Mr. Zahariev, uh, how can we attract uh, more Chinese tourists to Europe and especially to lesser known destinations? Uh, what are, in your views, the opportunities and the challenges? and how we can address them. Uh, if you can tell us. Thank you very much, Anna. Dear honorable guests, ladies and gentlemen, the legendary Marco Polo in the Middle Ages traveled on the Silk Road hundreds of years ago uh, to bridge the gap between West and East. Uh, he was, in fact, the first uh, European citizen who left a detailed chronicle on his experience. Today, for us, the modern European people, uh, it's a matter uh, to do it uh, just for a few hours. It's, uh, it's connected with a direct line between Europe and uh, China, but it could be even faster uh, if we speak about the new technologies. Only for a few seconds you can speak with uh, every Chinese via your mobile on WeChat or to pay your bill or to book your hotel or restaurant or a concert or a ticket via sea trip, for example. So the key word today for us is the cooperation. This is the cooperation for the mutual growth. As the, His Excellency Ambassador said on uh, 12th of July 2016, the President of the European Commission, Jean-Claude Juncker, and uh, 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 the Chinese Prime Minister, Li Keqiang, announced that 2018 should be the EU-China tourism year. Uh, China and EU each has uh, plenty of offer to, uh, uh, to offer each other, long history, rich culture, uh, a lot of brands and warm hospitality. But uh, as an uh, industry involving many businesses, tourism plays a uh, unique role in promoting growth, increasing employment, and boosting consumption. While Chinese tourists, for example, can come to Europe to experience out of uh, our European life and buy European products, Chinese uh, e-commerce platforms like Alibaba, uh, Taobao, JD, Ctrip, and WeChat, uh, etc., will also find their way to involvement and to benefit on this process, selling goods to the Chinese. Uh, these are every reason to be optimist. The number of Chinese visitors to Europe is ever increasing. Trade between China and EU is uh, growing st steadily, and connectivity between the two sides uh, has reached uh, new heights. Uh, the potential of growth is obviously in front of us. Europe is now the third largest destination for China and Chinese when traveling abroad after neighboring Southeast Asia and East Asia. President Xi Jinping announced that the Chinese would making 700 million overseas visits in the forthcoming five years. Statistics show that uh, the currently none of the top five destinations where Chinese tourists spent the most money were European. The first EU country, for example, Italy, comes only on the ninth place. Chinese outbound tourism is forecasted to increase even more as only a small percentage of the Chinese population owns a passport. 
it is expected that uh, this huge population of Chinese who have uh, uh, never left the country will make their first departures in the forthcoming years. All of these signs point to a dramatic increase of the Chinese outbound tourism in the coming years. Are we ready for this? Do we understand the Chinese tourists? Marketing to Chinese tourists can be incredibly difficult, especially when you are trying to reach out to people who don't speak the same language and have a completely different sense of wants and needs than your normal customers. As uh, a good tour is not just about landscapes, food, or souvenirs, but more about exploring a new world which has different customs, culture, lifestyle, and thinkings. Failure to understand your customers can lead uh, dissatisfied, and in the world of the social media, your reputation can be destroyed before you even know it. So it's especially true when it comes to the Chinese social media. So before you start marketing, put an extra effort to understand your customers and do your best to make a good impression. Adventure, leisure, shopping, what the Chinese really want. A short answer will be all the three of us. All the three are expected, but it really comes down to breaking Chinese tourists into categories. Chinese tourists come from a variety of age groups, regions, and incomes level. Depending on these factors, Chinese tourists will expect and prefer different things. Here are a few examples. The older Chinese tourists who have traditionally been the largest customers base for group level travel have even begun traveling independently. They have typically traveled domestically through China, but more have begun traveling abroad to locations like France, like Spain, Italy, and Western Europe in the recent years. CTRIP reports 87% of the participants of the survey aged 50 plus that are planned to travel this year, although they are more price sensitive and than the younger and more adventurous Chinese. Be creating tailored services for seniors, we have to uh, do our best for their last impression with a huge growing population of the new independent Chinese travelers. One of the key stereotypes attributed to Chinese tourists is that they absolutely love to shop. Shop till they drop, as we said. In previous years, most Chinese would travel abroad simply for buying luxury goods, cosmetics, and other items for cheaper prices, but from a distributors and traders that they trust. This phenomenon is still likely to continue, and the tour operators in Europe from both sides are better to be well prepared for this challenge. Middle-class Chinese often travel in groups, on those tours, the <coughs> culture and history is one of the priorities, but it's not only this. They are <coughs> trying to visit as much more countries in one, in one visit of Europe. For example, two, three days per country. Chinese tourists will appreciate different cultures, but, but are in fact mainly after the goods, specifically European brands. Also, the Chinese sense of Western geography can be unpredictable. But before you judge, consider this. China has the second most UNESCO World Heritage sites only after Italy, 52 in total. How many of those you can name? Due to the high costs of the travel for long distance, most tourists travel to Europe at low frequency and stay for a long time during each visit. Most of the tourist routes include more than three countries. Self-coordinated group tours are growing rapidly. Also, as more of and more Chinese tourists are not satisfied with the traditional traveling routes and they are seeking for leisure, travel with greater freedom, and they are willing to explore new things and how to approach them. 
what are the challenges that we are facing in this new situation. One of the many challenges we are facing today in Europe to attract more Chinese tourists, <clears throat> I would like to stress the following. On the first side is the visa issues. Visa has become a major obstacle to boosting tourism cooperation between China and Europe. Granting, for example, Chinese and European citizens with a reciprocal five-year multiple entry would definitely become a most welcoming incentive for travelers to return for the second trip, and it's as simple as that. Another issue is the flexibility of payments. Payments by mobile phones, which is widely accepted by Chinese retailers nowadays, is yet a new thing that has to be adopted by their European counterparts, financial institutions, traders, and banks. You just scan the barcode and with, this, with your mobile phone, and it's done. It's paid. The third issue is adding more and more new direct flights between Europe and Chinese cities, as His Excellency already said. And also, the digitalization of EU tourism should be a priority. How digital tools and particularly online booking platforms and social media can help boost the number of Chinese tourists in Europe remains a challenge to us all in Europe, in 2017, 57% of the Chinese tourists to Europe booked via mobile telephones on sea trip. Just to mention that sea trip is number one in Asia and number two globally tourist agency. And why do they, they do this? Because the mobile booking channel is faster, much more convenient, and they depend more and more on their mobile phones mobile devices while traveling. We <laughs> have to admit that for us in Europe, having just a presence on the web, like an online travel agency, is no longer a sufficient to attract Chinese tourists, particularly the growing number of independent travelers who are already so used to use their mobile devices to book their plane, their tickets, hotel rooms, restaurants, cinema seats, etc., etc. That's why the new mobile apps are the future. For example, WeChat, number one company in Asia, estimated by 500 billion US dollars a few months ago. WeChat is not a social media anymore. It's not as many people put in China version of WhatsApp. It has become a tool, an operating system which integrates all different functions of people's everyday life. In order to attract Chinese tourists, Europe needs to use as WeChat mini programs, e-wallet solutions like WeChat Pay and Alipay, online booking systems and apps like Ctrip and Dianping, and leading mapping platforms like Baidu Maps. The growing Reliance on the internet by Chinese travelers means also their huge consumption of <coughs> online data, which our European mobile service operators can as well try to make advantage by offering flexible solutions. By doing do this, we can make Chinese tourists feel more comfortable, feel welcomed. It will help our hotels, restaurants, museums, amusement parks, etc., etc., our sightseeing and tourist destinations reach out more easily to the Chinese outbound tourism market. And at the, at the end, a few words on the behalf of the National Board of Tourism for the potential of the Bulgarian tourist destination. As we said, and what is the, our slogan in our association, it is four seasons for you. We want to establish Bulgaria as a Four Seasons destination, which exactly is the will of the Bulgarian government. In 2017, we have around 20,000 Chinese tourists visited Bulgaria, of course, 20% more than the previous year, but just for the purposes of the statistic, it's only 0.2% of the all arrivals from China to Europe 
which have chosen Bulgaria as a destination compared to the population. <clears throat> this is seven times less than the European average. This shows a great growth potential. Just an example for, from Central and Eastern Europe, the Czech Republic, which His Excellency already mentioned, they have increased because of the direct flight up to 500,000 Chinese tourists per year. In our point of view, the direct flight is number one priority for our government and our country to establish a direct line between Sofia, Beijing, or Shanghai. In September 2017, the Bulgarian government joined hands with the Chinese business organization, ACN Worldwide, to have opened the first tourist informational center in Shanghai. As a typical public-private partnership, this tourist information center in Shanghai now ready to branch out into other cities across China, and our next step is to partner with the same organization to open another one in Beijing later on in autumn this year. The Chinese-Bulgarian Tourism Forum will be in the second half of 2018 with the framework of the 16 plus 1 initiative. The idea was born during the Bulgarian-Chinese intergovernmental meeting on the occasion of the sixth summit of the heads of states of governments of the uh, countries from Central and Eastern Europe in China, held in Budapest, Hungary, last year, under the patronage of Mr. Li Keqiang, the premier state of uh, China and our prime minister. As a national board of tourism, we are planning this year also to organize a few FAM trips for a Chinese tour agencies to introduce them Bulgaria with the most interesting tourist sites on a seven-day round trip. We call it the best of Bulgaria. Dear ladies and gentlemen, China is big, fast-growing, more and more reachable, but it can be quick and easy. Chinese people appreciate our lifestyle, our brands, they want to see our great history, beautiful nature, but they speak their own language. So we have to cross the border first, telling them about Europe and to attract them. The new technologies like WeChat, Ctrip, and other mobile apps and platforms are the shortest cut, the best tool to find our language, to communicate with the Chinese tourists. That should be our current focus today and in the next few years. Connectivity is the right word. Digital connectivity, transport connectivity. The EU-China tourism year 2018 as a single year is not enough. This initiative has to grow for a decade. I am a strong believer that this won't be, uh, uh, this is a win-to-win -win situation. So let's make it longer. Uh, in fact, uh, the uh, EU-China Year of Tourism 2018 uh, doesn't matter which year it is. It could be a never-ending story, and 2018 is just the beginning. It could be really never-ending story. Thank you for your attention. Uh, thank you, Mr. Zaharyev. Uh, indeed, uh, also in the eyes of the European Commission, we hope that uh, the uh, 2018 uh, will be the beginning for a long cooperation between uh, uh, EU and China in the area of tourism and also uh, between our tourism businesses and our member states. Um, uh, thank you for also for the insights that you gave us into the Chinese market. Indeed, uh, connectivity is an, uh, a focus and a priority. Um, how we can be uh, China ready and digital ready is another one. And uh, I also see time and again um, the need to, to work more closely together to uh, develop a joint uh, offer, joint proposals for Chinese tourists uh, and diversify uh, what the European destinations have to offer is a must. Uh, and is a direction in which uh, we can perhaps um, reinforce our cooperation at European level. And this is why actually uh, under the, within the framework of the um, uh, EU-China Tourism Year, uh, the European Commission in cooperation with the European, uh, European Travel Commission um, are, have set up a, a platform. We call it a joint uh, promotion platform.
And the idea is to give an opportunity to national tourism organizations, member states, regions, but also uh, private uh, partners, companies, to uh, work together uh, in order to uh, diversify, uh, promote and develop uh, joint uh, tourism products uh, which will be um, uh, also uh, uh, promoted in, uh, during cooperative marketing campaigns in China. Um, China is used as a pilot for this experiment, uh, for this multi-stakeholder platform. We hope that uh, we will, will be able to uh, use uh, the example of the joint promotion platform, not only in relation to China, but also in relation to other uh, long-haul markets. Uh, so uh, I'm, I'm reassured, if you like, in a way uh, that I see that this need is uh, time and again repeated uh, also from those working on the ground to promote uh, European destinations in, in China. Uh, one of the themes, actually, one of the thematic products that uh, uh, may be developed uh, under the uh, joint promotion platform is gastronomy. And uh, uh, let me now turn to Mr. Gelev, who's actually working on this link between the agri-food sector and tourism uh, to seek his views about how best uh, we can promote this link between uh, uh, agri uh, the agri-food sector and tourism, gastronomy, and uh, how he works on that uh, in relation to the Chinese market. Uh, Your Excellency, distinguished guests, uh, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Uh, on behalf of the Ministry of Agriculture and uh, Food, I would like to welcome you in Bulgaria and wish you a pleasant stay. We have prepared a short presentation about our organization and uh, we were trying to, passing through the different projects which we have successfully started, I would like to tell you how we see the further development of the cooperation between China and the Central and Eastern European countries. Um, this is who we are. We are a team of the 16 plus one ministers of agriculture uh, one executive director who is in front of you, 29 consultative board members, and over 30,000 employees from the 16 and China ministries of agriculture. Uh, it is very important to stress out that our association is not Bulgarian nor Chinese. It belongs to all 17 countries, and we work perfectly together so far. Uh, we have two major projects since we have been established. Uh, we started our work back in uh, June 2016, so for the period of those two and a half years, we were focused on establishing uh, logistic facilities for trading and supporting the trading between China and the Central and Eastern European countries. We started, uh, of course, following the Chinese model because we're sure that uh, we're not trying to find out the new ways for approach. There is already have been made one from uh, We started to establish our facilities uh, because we believe that uh, e-commerce, today we very often heard the word digitalization and this is something that we really have to focus on. That's why in the last two years, we have uh, established into the free trade zones of China numerous of uh, pavilions for promoting our countries. The main idea of those pavilions is to be a window to the countries. This uh, compares not only uh, showing the food, but also arranging different kind of um, activities, promotion of activities. In 2016, um, after Bulgaria have successfully opened the first ever 16 plus one uh, pavilion into the free trade zone of Shanghai, we were followed by Poland, Hungary, Macedonia, and other countries from the Central and Eastern European countries to open this kind of facilities, not only in Shanghai, but also in other parts of China. I see that the big projects are still working, so probably uh, you can uh, you can look at them, and I will tell you what are our activities for 2018. Uh, the first and most important uh, will be in May. We're arranging the every year 
May summit meeting of the ministers of agriculture of China and the Central and Eastern European countries. We meet once a year and we discuss the topics for our cooperation. Uh, together with uh, this meeting, we also held our consultative board meeting and we are looking forward to the second part of 2018 to organize and held successfully the summit of the heads of the governments of China and the Central and Eastern European countries, which will be held in Bulgaria. E-commerce. Uh, my colleague and good friend uh, Martin Zaharyev just mentioned about e-commerce boom in China. It's really something that is booming uh, and developing very fast. I can assure you that um, nowadays e-commerce in China is not part of the economy of the country. It's a, a separate industry which by 2020 will generate about 1 trillion euro. Uh, so it is a great opportunity not only for Bulgaria as a small country but also for the rest of the world to take part in this digitalization of Asia, not only of China but also of Asia. Uh, China people, um, one of the reasons why China people are using their mobile phones so often is that uh, they don't have time, they lack of time. Uh, they work too much, they work too hard because they're willing to succeed and uh, they lack on time to visit those places by themselves, so they're using their mobile phones just to, to live normally. And um, it is a great opportunity that we have to grab, and uh, Bulgaria is a, one of the very good examples of how everything is shutting up. Uh, Bulgaria is uh, one of the very good examples of how as a small country we can contribute to the digitalization of uh, Central and Eastern European countries when uh, talking about China. Uh, it's time to go, sorry. <laughs> It is back? Okay, great. Uh, okay, so the e-commerce boom, we, we understand that it's important. You can see how many people in China, we know China is, uh, the population is uh, the biggest and we can see how much they generate uh, over the trade by e-commerce. And as mentioned before, by 2020, these numbers there will be one billion, uh, one, almost one trillion uh, dollar. So, Following these trends and following the trends of the China policy for encouraging the e-commerce, e we started a very interesting project last year which named 16 plus 1 e-commerce logistic hub. Uh, this logistic hub and the project was supported during the Prime Minister's meeting in Budapest last year and is written into the good guidelines from Budapest. Uh, the Prime Minister supports Bulgaria and other countries from Central and Eastern Europe, as well as China, to establish those facilities to encourage the trade between the countries. Our willingness is not only to make a network of logistic hubs and transport companies, but also to involve a number of authority networks to work with us, such as the custom clearance services, quality control, and other support for the import and export. We have started, in, as mentioned, in 2015 by opening the first uh, 16 plus 1 pavilion in Hangzhou. Now we already have three, six, seven, from which four are dedicated to the Bulgarian roles. And in, this, in, in respect to answering Anna's question about how uh, agro-trade and agriculture could work together to encourage and boost the tourism cooperation, this is one of the ways. Because knowing the products of a country, knowing the tradition and the culture of a country is leading you to visit this country as well. We're, uh, as a country, our countries from the Western Balkans not only also from Central and Eastern Europe, we are too small, as mentioned before, for the Chinese tourists, but we can show them a lot, and uh, this is one of our benefits, and uh, we should use it as much as we can. So, in our experience centers, we call them experience centers, these facilities which we established with the 
Um, they are fully support uh, and promoted by the Chinese government. Um, also, financially in China, uh, the countries are not paying anything for this. This is the first uh, numbers of countries, is the 16 plus one countries who are not paying for the establishment of these facilities worldwide. Uh, so we do promotion, we do sales, but beside this, we encourage the tourism as a destination, the countries, as a window to the country. We are showing you now pictures from our 16 plus one pavilion in Shanghai into the Waigaotiao free trade zone. This is the first and pilot uh, free trade zone in China. That's why it was so important for us to start from there. Um, back in two, three years ago, it was only a couple of free trade zones. Nowadays, in every, almost in every bigger city in China, there is a free trade zone promoting and encouraging the, the trade between the countries and encouraging investment, tourism and other activities. Talking about Bulgaria, um, everyone recognized Bulgaria mostly with the Bulgarian Rose. So we had our initiative to support a Chinese companies to establish a chains of Bulgarian Rose Tame pavilions. We started again with Shanghai. Now we have already four or five cities where are presenting Bulgarian products from um, with uh, ingredient uh, inside with the Bulgarian rose. And uh, in the last two years, we have numbers of tourists from China who are visiting Bulgaria just before they know the Bulgarian cosmetic. And as mentioned before, they're willing to buy those goods directly from the supplier. Uh, so at a different aspect, uh, our collaboration is um, actually with every ministry, every authority is um, engaged in this collaboration. And the prosperity is um, just as our main highlight during this session of the ministerial meetings, uh, stronger we're, uh, together we're stronger. And this is the truth. Uh, you can see the Macedonian and this is the Bulgarian pavilion in uh, Hanzhou. A food could be also a messenger um, of traditions and culture. Uh, bringing back to 2015, we have established uh, and also made a lot of uh, activities for promoting Bulgarian food and also food from other countries in China. And this has led to few groups of tourists. It's of course a small step, but it's a very stable one. A group of tourists who have visited not only Bulgaria, but also a round trip through the Central and Eastern European countries just to try the food and to, uh, to share their experience back with the Chinese friends when back. Uh, we organize uh, specific events, promote uh, our countries, and every week in Shanghai, uh, we have numerous of activities dedicated to different countries, a week of Bulgaria, a week of Hungary, a week of Poland, this contributes really to uh, increase of the tourists and I hope that um, all together in future we will continue to achieve more and more and uh, we will contribute to uh, a better world. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you. Uh, uh, well, perhaps political initiatives and policy support uh, are necessary for boosting cooperation in tourism between EU and China, but it's not enough. Uh, the role of the private sector of businesses uh, is very important because it's actually uh, them through their cooperation and through investment that they can build a bridge between the EU and China. Uh, this is why already before 2018, uh, we have supported uh, at EU level uh, business uh, match ma matchmaking events between EU businesses and Chinese businesses. Um, actually, well, Istvan, I was about to pronounce your name when the lights went off. I don't know what to say. <laughs> actually, uh, we did that in the context of a, a pilot project proposed by the uh, European Parliament, and the initiator of which is actually sitting with us today, Mr. Istvan uh, for uh, whom to whom we are grateful for that uh, initiative, because that, in, in a way, paved uh, uh, the way for the number of uh, um, matchmaking events that we are uh, supporting uh, during 2018 
in order to accompany uh, EU businesses uh, and facilitate cooperation between uh, between them and between their Chinese counterparts. So uh, let me now turn to the three last uh, speakers of the panel who will actually uh, share with us their views exactly about that, about the role of the private sector, about opportunities and challenges that uh, um, uh, EU and Chinese tour tourism businesses may face in their cooperation. So first, uh, we'll hear the views from, of Mr. Tom Jenkins uh, from the European Tourism Association. Then we will turn to Ms. Uh, Claudia Vernotti from China EU. And last but not least, Mr. Ivan Todorov, the chairman of the Bulgarian Center for Development, Investment and Tourism, whom I apologize because I forgot to mention your name in the beginning. So Mr. Jenkins, the floor is yours. Thank you, Anna. Um, <clears throat> I appreciate it. I've got five minutes, so I will be very quick. Um, ladies and gentlemen, I think the uh, Commission ought to be congratulated on the EU-China tourism year. Um, it really is an extraordinary achievement. Um, I think for the first time, um, China, the most ancient um, homogeneous culture on earth, actually has something almost its equivalent in stature. Um, Europe is a genuinely, it's almost the opposite of China, it's a genuinely heterogeneous culture. In the, way, in the same way that China is an amazingly unitary culture. Um, and it's good to come to Bulgaria to be reminded that we don't even share an alphabet. Um, I think much more than that, um, what we're seeing is um, the first really big step in marketing Europe as a, a destination. And the beauty of doing so with China is that China genuinely sees Europe as a unitary destination. The average Chinese visitor still goes to more than three countries when they come to Europe. Um, and um, when, uh, if you just look at the previous, on the negative level, if you look at the previous um, topic, um, they also stay away from Europe. If something goes wrong, Europe is perceived as being somewhere they shouldn't go to. So we've got a big mutual interest in marketing ourselves to China, and it's great that under the banner of the Partnerships in European Tourism Programme, that um, uh, the European Commission and ETC have been encouraging countries to join together and market um, mutual and multi-country itineraries. This is an excellent um, initiative. And we, as part of this program, are delivering the B2B events. Um, we're doing them in uh, Berlin, Beijing, Shanghai, Guangdong, Macau, and London this year. Um, we probably will do some more next year, but they're still in, in the pipeline. I think the thing to realize about these events is that um, we will have buyers sitting at tables, um, largely Chinese buyers or certainly people doing business in China, and we will have European SMEs moving between those tables selling what they do. Um, I'm trying to give you one new thought, and I think the thought I want to leave you with, and I wish to finish very quickly here because I know we're ru running out of time, one big thought is that we always learn from our visitors. Uh, Europe learnt lots from the North Americans. Uh, it, the arrival of North American visitors in Europe transformed the provision of hotel accommodation. We learnt lots from the Japanese, the first big contingent of agent visitors coming over on the, how to prioritise the wishes and needs of the customer. This is a totally new Asian phenomenon for Europe to absorb. We will learn from the Chinese. What we will learn, I don't know. It's a kind of unknown unknown. But China is not an easy market. It is a young market with huge scope, for, huge scope for growth and huge scope for dizzying change. What they want now will maybe be very, very different from what they want in 48 months' time. And what you will see when you go to these workshops is notionally you have buyers sitting at tables and notionally, you have suppliers trying to sell them something as they circulate around those tables. But it isn't that straightforward. Because what the people with products that they're trying to sell to the Chinese, they're not being confronted by people saying, I'm going to buy your product. I'll book it today. They're saying, use me to distribute your product in China. And the people selling things are almost being presented with a purchasing decision. And this is totally new. They're almost being asked, who are they going to buy these distribution services off? And this is a new transformation that we're witnessing. Ladies, my ladies and gentlemen, my five minutes up. Thank you very much, Anna. 
Thank you. That woke us up right before the end. Very interesting. Uh, Ms. Vernotti, now to you. Um, uh, are our businesses China ready? And how can we make sure that they are? What, is, uh, what can you tell us based on your experience? Uh, thank you very much, uh, Anna, and um, well, dear Ambassador Zhang, uh, dear Minister, MEPs, and uh, each of every participant. First of all, I would like to thank you very much for the invitation to this panel, and it's a pleasure to be back uh, in Sofia for the second time. Uh, China U is a business-led association focusing on uh, building cooperation between digital players from China and from Europe. Uh, digital players, uh, until recently, uh, have not really um, shown maybe too much interest for tourism, which is a, a traditional sector. But uh, since the emergence of online booking sites, sharing economy platforms, electronic ticketing reservation, uh, as we have all also discussed this morning and in the afternoon, uh, tourism is becoming more and more uh, digital. So we heard that from many speakers already, from Commissioner Blinkowska, Minister Angelkova, many others, and of course also from Martin. And actually, I will build uh, pretty much upon what Martin has already said before, and that also keeps my speech probably very brief. Uh, many others, and of course also from Martin. And actually, I will build uh, pretty much upon what Martin has already said before, and that also keeps my speech probably very brief. Um, uh, so basically, if we want uh, to attract uh, more Chinese visitors to Europe and also to the Balkan region, so to regions which are not probably on the top list of the destinations of the Chinese in Europe, internet is going to be part of the solution, it's going to be a big uh, part of the solution. And today, as it's already been mentioned, uh, internet is not anymore just about search engines. So of course it's important to be visible uh, online, to have a presence on a website, uh, with uh, updated information and possibly also in Chinese, if the target is China, of course. But if you want to have a real impact, uh, then you need an active uh, strategy. And uh, China U, in this regard, has some concrete proposals uh, on how uh, possibly uh, what could be done to attract more Chinese visitors uh, to Bulgaria. So I will keep this very brief to only three. And uh, these proposals are both uh, on the basis of the behavior of the Chinese, uh, potential Chinese visitors, and their profile. So what we know about them, and this has already been mentioned by Martin as well, is that they're all pretty much tech savvy and mobile focused. Uh, so first of all, they all use WeChat, uh, as, and we have heard this many times, right? So WeChat today has almost 1 billion users, 980 million to be precise. And it's not just the biggest social media application in China, but it is uh, something which has become really intrinsic uh, in people's lifestyle and also traveling um, experience. And actually, we could say that pretty much 100% of the Chinese population, which is uh, so acceptable to travel to Europe, basically uses uh, WeChat, because the travelers today are, as we said, uh, FT, FITs are younger people, they are all uh, digital savvy. Second, uh, when the visitors um, want to go abroad, they, they have to book a travel. They would do this uh, through a travel agency, online travel agency, and they're most likely gonna use Ctrip, which is the biggest one in China, with 300 million members. And uh, to give an idea also of the impact uh, of, of such a platform, uh, we were told the story by actually the, well, uh, executive of uh, Ctrip, on how recently uh, they were promoting a, uh, a worldwide tour package uh, to travel the world in 88 days at the price of 200,000 US dollars uh, per person. And that was sold uh, in only 17 seconds. Uh, so it's quite impressive, of course, because of course, I mean, either if you have uh, the time, probably you don't have the money to spend on such a thing or vice versa. But in China, obviously, this is possible. There is purchasing power, and there is, you know, this. So just to, to give an example. And so uh, if Bulgaria and the Balkan region wants to uh, promote uh, its online offering, obviously, a partnership with Citro becomes uh, key. Thirdly, uh, we need to take into account the fact that Chinese tourists do not have the same cultural background uh, than uh, Europeans. And what Chinese know about the West come mainly from uh, Chinese media, foreign films. 
So why US, is, US assassinations are so popular in the eyes of the Chinese is also because of Hollywood, for example. Similarly, London, Paris, Rome are shown a bit everywhere in the Chinese, well, movies, on TV, and so on. So these are strong brands. Uh, priority, so, could be also for the Balkans to make themselves known, more familiar to the eyes of the Chinese. So concretely, based on these three points, our proposals are the following. First, uh, to launch a mini program on WeChat, more precisely, a WeChat City Experience mini program. So this has been already introduced by Martin. Mini programs are mini applications within WeChat, big application. Uh, so it's just an interface, really. So you don't need, it, need to download any, uh, any separate app. And as of last year, November, there has been three pilots for the cities of London, Sydney, and Dubai uh, in partnership with the respective national tourism boards. Sofia could be the pioneer in all uh, well, continental Europe, if you, don't, if you exclude London, uh, to actually launch such a mini program, offering the Chinese travelers the possibility to check what's around in Sofia within, uh, within WeChat through an interactive map, and knowing exactly where, what is where, and also having information in Chinese about the different points of interest, but also about the shopping, dining, accommodation options, and more than that, actually being able to book directly through the platform, also by passing the, the language problem. So you don't need to speak to the supplier in English or in Bulgarian. And secondly, a uh, second proposal we have is a signature of an MOU between, again, the mentioned CTRIP and the Bulgarian National Tourism Board. And this MOU, in our eyes, could be just the start uh, of uh, concrete actions and promotions, uh, of course. And uh, the Hungarian, actually, uh, counterpart um, of the Bulgarian board already did this, actually, uh, just last year, the 16 plus one. So I'm sure Oliver might have uh, more uh, to tell us about this. Uh, and in this framework, the EU Digital Assembly uh, that uh, the Bulgarian EU presidency will host in June this year with the commission could be a good opportunity to leverage, uh, to invite, for example, the CEO of Citrip herself to come here to Sofia. Uh, as, a, as a prominent speaker for the event, while at the same time um, inviting her to, have, uh, to sign this MOU, which I was mentioning, in a, in a bilateral meeting, in a, in, a, in a side event. And this will show uh, that uh, Bulgaria and the region are not marginal at all in the European Union, if you bring such a high-profile person. Uh, such meeting, of course, could happen also in the presence of the Bulgarian decision makers, uh, and that could make it even more impactful and third, and lastly, uh, as I mentioned above, uh, investigate cooperation with Chinese uh, TV productions. Also produce, produce, for example, high quality videos that really promote the um, top destinations and the, the attractiveness of Sofia as a destination. Uh, and here again, we can use a case of uh, Hungary or Croatia in the past. Uh, C-Trip has been uh, ha quite helpful also on these uh, activities. Uh, so if we want to increase the number of Chinese visitors, uh, it is indispensable that Bulgaria really means something uh, for them. And, uh, and then, of course, like any other social media and online presence, there is the uh, network effect. So when Chinese come and they post selfies on the, on, the, on the WeChat and so on, this attracts more visitors to come afterwards. So China U, to conclude, uh, really hopes that these initiatives will be pursued. And uh, if uh, needed, we are obviously uh, very helpful, very, very willing to assist Bulgarian authorities with the expertise and contacts we have in China. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Claudia. Now let us turn to our uh, last panelist, Mr. Todorov. Uh, Mr. Todorov, um, EU and China, what opportunities do you see for European and Bulgarian businesses, tourism businesses, uh, for investment and cooperation in China? What are your thoughts? Thank you, Anna. Аз ще се спра на по-конкретна информация, която искам така да представя от това, което ние правим, тъй като нашите панелисти бяха много изчерпателни до момента и в лицето на господин посланник Мартин също, тъй като наистина Това всичко, което чуваме, това са неща, които наистина ние се опитваме да направим, но в крайна сметка ние 
стигаме до там, че искаме да влезем в конкретиката на на това да убедиме китайските туристи да дойдат в България. Няма да се спирам на същите теми, които преди малко говориха, само искам да така да се върна на това, което и господин посланника каза, че наистина България не е толкова позната в Китай и ние трябва да се опитаме да намерим начина, по който да представим България, продуктите в България. Казахме, че имаме прекрасно, така, прекрасни продукти, като рози, вино и други такива. Ние избрахме пътя също да представим България чрез дълголетието, което се придобива от консумацията на киселото мляко. И така се роди всъщност един продукт, който преди 7 години беше изцяло неизвестен в Китай. Сега вече няколко стотин милиона китайци консумират този продукт. Това е продукта Момчиловци, който е кисело мляко момчиловци. Момчиловци, може би голяма част от вас не са чували какво е това, но това е едно прекрасно село в нашата красива планина Родопи. И всъщност това е мястото на дълголетието. И именно всъщност мотото, че момчиловци е символ на дълголетие, по този начин ние демонстрираме всъщност какво е България, какви са продуктите на България и какво могат да опитат китайските туристи, когато дойдат в България. Разбира се, това е съчетано с един продукт, който се произвежда в Китай. Това е кисело мляко мучиловци, което се произвежда от нашите партньори Bright Food Corporation. Преди 7 години започва, започнахме от нула. Миналата година продажбите на този продукт са над 1 милиард упаковки кисело мляко, което а, стреглаво расте нагоре и по този начин нещата се случват. А, през 2012 година за първи път посетихме училовци от гледна точка на развитие на маркетинга, защото аз напълно споделя мнението на всеки от а, така, панелистите, че Наистина ние трябва да презентираме по някакъв начин България, трябва да презентираме нашите продукти и трябва да ги направим достояние до потребителите в Китай. Защото ако китайският потребител е намерил пътя към тези държави, които са в Европейския съюз, то е защото по някакъв начин тези държави са разпознаваеми. Аз напълно споделям това, което господин посланник каза, че България все още не е разпознаваема и ние всички много добре го знаеме. Сега в момента. Седем години по-късно мога да кажа, че няколко стотин милиона китайци разпознават момчиловци с този продукт, но те все още не разпознават България и всъщност нашата цел е от тук нататък те да разпознаят България. Разбира се, това става чрез реклама. Можем да пуснем този рекламен клип. В този рекламен клип участва поп-групата My Day, която е една от най-популярните китайски поп-групи. Тази група My Day, които са рекламно лице всъщност на продукта Момчиловци, изнасят множество концерти в Китай, които са в големи зали между 30 и 50 хиляди души и там наистина се говори за България, там се говори за момчиловци. И всъщност това е така и нашата надежда, че след време китайците ще дойдат тук, за да може да видят къде е това село момчиловци, селото на дълголетието. А, преди няколко години също беше организирано едно събитие, като вие знаете предаването Survivor, по същия този начин. Така, китайци, които са така широко популярни в Китай, бяха имплантирани в село Момчиловци да живеят в къщи на, така, на местното население. И всичко това се предаваше онлайн нали, по социалните медии нали, в Китай. Това получи изключително голям отзвук и разбира се, 
това допринася също до увеличаване продажбите от една страна на продукта и от друга страна обаче нарастване на популярността на продукта Момчиловци, който всъщност е заряда, който смятаме по този начин, чрез този продукт, да разкриеме всъщност и възможностите на България като туристическа дестинация, в която подобен тип продукти наистина са много интересни. Това е следващ клип, който също показва дълголетието, което всъщност е нашето послание към китайските туристи. Chang 啊，我宣布啊，首先，首先，首先，首先，首先，首先，首先，首先，首先，首先，首先，首先，首先，首先，首先，首先，首先，首先，首先，首先，首先，首先，首先，首先，首先，首先，首先，首先，首先，首先，
Така че през септември миналата година ние положихме символично първия камък с едно послание, което отправихме в времето. Господин Гелев също беше там. Така че смятам, че поставихме едно добро начало. Говорим за дигитална комуникация. Ние подкрепяме една апликация, която е история, чрез която всъщност всеки турист, който си сканира този QR код, може да намери в София един така туристически маршрут, който е и на китайски и да може свободният турист, който не е организиран, да направи своя избор къде да отиде в София, а в момента се разработва разширението на това приложение, което ще обхваща вече маршрута от София до Момчиловци. А всъщност сега накрая искам да ви покажа също още един рекламен филм, който ние сме правили за момчиловци, който всъщност той е 360 градус филм, който показва всъщност красотата на българската дивойка. Това е една от кралиците на киселото мляко, която ще видите във филма, така че можем да го изгледаме и него. Малко е тих звука, но... се играло се и може да се вижда от различни погледи. Ако ви харесва мучиловци, заповядайте на фестивал. Нашите практически действия, които ние сме извършили във връзка с реализацията на този проект, като по този начин искаме стъпка по стъпка във времето да преодолеем това, че наистина България не е чак толкова известна туристическа дестинация в Китай и се надяваме, че след като и реализираме проекта, строителството на тази ферма тази година, от следващата година вече ние ще можем да покажем на китайския турист наистина мястото на дълголетието в България и по този начин да привлечем, не си поставиме цифра, разбира се, но интереса на китайския турист, който има интерес точно към подобен тип специализиран вид туризъм, защото нашето мнение е, че специализирания вид туризъм, насочен към страна като България и към региона, е така правилната посока, защото все пак България и Балканите са различна територия в Европейския съюз и ние трябва да бъдем самобитни и със свой собствен облик. Да, благодаря ви. Well, thank you. Uh, that concludes the interventions of the panelists. Uh, but before wrapping up the discussion, uh, I see uh, um, the a member of the European Parliament, Mr. Istvan Uhi, who'd like to take the floor. Istvan, the floor is yours. 
Thank you, Anna. After the fantastic Bulgarian yogurt, the Kiselo Mleko, uh, I love it. I like it very much. After that, I would like to inform you that uh, the European Parliament uh, and my team will organize one uh, high-level event in the European Parliament in 28th of February, so in two weeks, which is the, uh, I hope, the uh, biggest event in the European Parliament uh, uh, under the EU-China Tourism Year. And I know that very well there are lots of uh, people here in the room who, uh, who would like to have more connection with Chinese uh, business companies, with the Chinese uh, media, uh, Chinese uh, journalists, or Chinese uh, decision makers. That's why I would like to invite you please contact me if uh, somebody would like to be there. Uh, it's a big uh, uh, event, uh, about 200 people uh, from Europe and from China, and uh, we would like to support your connections to the Chinese uh, colleagues. Um, so please uh, contact me. The second information, uh, we established one uh, new NGO in uh, Brussels, it was two years ago, uh, to, to to support this bridge between the EU, China, EU and Chinese uh, tourism, culture, and uh, educational uh, networks. Uh, uh, if you would like to join this uh, NGO, uh, please contact us. Um, I, I invite you because we established it uh, to strengthening the cooperation between decision makers, uh, between the uh, European and Chinese uh, uh, diplomats, uh, politi political decision makers, or business people. So this, the name of this NGO, EU China, One Belt, One Road, uh, Tourism, uh, uh, Culture and Education Development Committee. Very long uh, name, but it, this is the Obor Committee in Brussels. So please join us. And uh, congratulations again to the Bulgarian uh, presidency to have this uh, issue to, to this topic uh, today. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Istvan. Well, I would also like to thank uh, the panelists for their um, suggestions, their uh, ideas and their insights into the cooperation between the EU and China in the area of tourism. Uh, it's true that uh, this cooperation is in its beginning phase, if I may say so, and uh, there's still a lot to be done to see it growing in the future. Uh, our hope in the European Commission is that uh, this initiative uh, with the EU-China tourism year during 20, uh, this year, 2018, uh, will plant the seeds for the future so that this cooperation will grow in many different ways, uh, stronger and stronger. Um, I don't know whether the organizers will close the meeting uh, or whether it falls up on me to close it. Okay, thank you very much. Благодаря ви, уважаема госпожа Анастасопо, за модерирането на този последен, но бих казал, първи по важност панел, панела на бъдещето, кооперацията между Европа и Китай. От страна на организаторите бих желал да благодаря на всички, които имахме честа да бъдат наши гости днес. Особено на, на всички модератори и панелисти, които ни запознаха с а, а, толкова интересни факти в а, всяка една от темите, а, които бяха обект на трите панела днес. А, аз а, не бих желал да си позволявам да правя някакво обобщение на, на целия ден, затова още веднъж благодарим на всички, които, които останаха до края Днешното събитие се радваше на изключителен обществен интерес. Нека кажем, че то бе първото по рода си част от българското председателство, което бе отворено за широката публика. Имахме над 500 гости на, на днешното събитие. Затова още веднъж сърдечни благодарности на всички, на всички ръководители на делегации, както и на всички панелисти, гости. И очакваме да се видим на следващото събитие в Австрия.